Hello, it's me, French Ted, and we are here for episode number 97 of our running AEW series, and we are here at a event that I'm really excited to just to see how things play out, because obviously we're borrowing quite a lot of Japanese talent, you know, their popularity isn't as good as, you know, what it should be in America, so... You know, there's potential for some surprisingly good matches and there's potential for some matches to fall flat because of this. Um, but no, we've got some really big matches tonight. You guys can see the match card in the description. You can also see in the description and on screen right now that there has been a match change. So in kayfabe, we're going to say due to travel restrictions, travel reasons, you know, some bullshit. But in reality... Uh, New Japan got a little bit angry with me because I was borrowing too many people um, in such a short amount of time, which I've never come across before. Um, I think because last year in game, I didn't borrow any talent until the night of, whereas this one I thought I'd bring talent over. So Okada appeared a few weeks ago and we had Shibata and Goto appear. We've had El Desperado appear recently. Um, so yeah, we've had to make one change and thankfully I kind of brought people in from most important to least important. So we got Okada, we got Goto and Shibata, we got Kushida, um, we got El Desperado. And then when I tried to bring in Shota Umino for TCC, New Japan were like, no, 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 you've borrowed too many now, fuck you. And I was like, what? And then I tried, obviously, Kanemaru, Taichi, all of them, and they were all just like, nope, you're not having any more. So there has been a match change. Um, and if you don't want to look in the description, that's fine. I'll tell you what it is. So the TCC and Shota Umino versus Just Five Guys has been changed. It is now a one-on-one -on -one singles match between John Moxley and El Desperado. So the two leaders will clash in a no disqualification match. They've requested it. We've accepted it. So that match is now a one-on-one -on -one instead of a five-on-five. -five. <laughs> so... Yeah, thankfully though, every other match is as it is. So I'm very happy that we kind of just hit the threshold of what we could loan at the perfect time, I guess. So yeah, although I'm hoping that New Japan being annoyed about loaning people isn't like permanent. I hope like in a week, in a week's time, it'll be like, yeah, you can loan someone else because one of my future plans course some of the few episodes ahead does involve a new japan talent so oh we'll have to wait and see but either way we are here for forbidden door welcome everyone um new japan forbidden door three uh the second one was on this tw series the first one was the original one in real life so we're ahead of the game you could say and we've got our pre-show team here renee paquette rj city and paul white they're just discussing tonight's matches. We've got Kenny Omega, Keith Lee opening. And um, Renee says, you know what? She's got faith in Keith. No, not Keith, in Kenny. She says, Kenny won the Grand Prix. He deserves it. He should go to All Out. Whereas RJ and Paul Waite are like, I don't know. Keith Lee's been pretty dominant. And like, I can't see anyone stopping him. Even Kenny can not stop him. So there's a bit of discussion around that. Um, and then, of course, the other highlights, I'd probably say all the bigger matches through the night, um, is, of course, Brian Danielson, Kushida, and Nick Jackson. Everyone's money is on Brian, but you never know of Nick Jackson. Uh, Okada and Punk, um, it's kind of split. People are saying, you know, obviously, Kazushika Okada got one up on him last time. So Punk wants revenge. Plus, Punk now has Bullet Club Gold, whereas last time he didn't. So that's a, a factor. Uh, everyone is supporting Hikaru Shida tonight. Of course, Kyrie is one of our own as well, but they're all thinking that Shida is going to become the uh, IWGP Women's Champion and Stardom Champion by the end of tonight. And then in the final, we've got Pac, Will Ospreay. It's very tough to tell between these two guys. They're both incredible. And um, RJ City says that he's leaning more towards Ospreay than Pac, but that's mostly just because he likes Ospreay more. Um, whereas Paul White says, you know, you can never really count out Ospreay, but Pac has been incredible over the last 12 months in every match he's taken part in. But the trouble with Pac is he gets to that final hurdle and then he fails. So could this be another one of those hurdles that he fails at? So uh, yeah, lots of things could happen tonight. 
um yeah it's exciting i'm excited i hope you guys are excited so let's not waste any more time and let's head straight into forbidden door with the first match being kenny omega and keith lee the winner of this match will main event aew all out in just over a month's time let's find out what happens oh a 98 to kick off the show my goodness in a bout that had sensational wrestling that might be my new favorite word and great heat kenny omega gets the win he defeats keith lee in 24 minutes with the one winged angel kenny omega with a 98 keith lee with a 98 they've got great chemistry oh what a dream every this is such a dream uh, the Kenny, uh, the Kenny Omega and Keith Lee storyline has now ended with this segment. Kenny Omega is officially, officially, I mean, officially again, the in the main event of AEW All Out, and will be challenging either Hook or one of the two men in the main event tonight. Whoever ends up World Heavyweight Champion by the time we get there, uh, Keith Lee, you know, an amazing effort. I mean, going toe to toe and matching performance with Kenny Omega is no small feat let's be honest and oh 98 beautiful was there anything that dragged it down i just want to see the odd feel uh i always say feel haste face heel combo uh but that was it oh yeah i think keith least to the face i don't think i ever actually turned him heel um but oh if he was a heel you never know oh that could have been a 100 ah uh, either way uh that match is done and chris jericho is just on commentary putting it over that Kenny Omega is going to all in and not just going there he is in the main event and of course Kenny Omega is celebrating with the crowd and yeah what a great occasion and what a great way to start the show and 98 I was I was about to say can anyone top that but honestly I don't think anyone can uh, but we will see uh, up next would have been our five on five uh the combat club and shota umino taking on just five guys but as we've already explained it has been changed to a no disqualification one-on-one -on -one match between the two leaders john moxley and el desperado so let's get straight into what i imagine would be a ridiculously fun match an 83 i'll take that in about that had great wrestling and good heat it is of course john moxley who gets the win over el desperado in a one-on-one -on -one no dq match in 11 and a half minutes a pretty quick one to be fair with the paradigm shift moxley with a 92 el desperado with a pretty good 70 you know for someone whose pop isn't very high at all in america 70 is really good uh, we put this one as an all-out uh, brawl a wild brawl just because they both got pretty good brawling stats and i figured that would elevate uh slightly but yeah great win here for john moxley um but his celebration is short-lived because of course he t he never times it um better that well no he always times it great what am i on about brock lesnar comes out of nowhere like literally no one saw this dude appear just out of nowhere and clatters john moxley using all of the weapons that were used during the match between moxley and el desperado to just batter and assault john moxley El Desperado kind of comes to and sees what's happening and thinks, you know what, fuck this guy, and gets involved. And it soon becomes a two-on-one attack between El Desperado and John Moxley attacking Brock Lesnar, who eventually manages, you know, to get off a couple of moves and then retreat through the crowd where, you know, people are like slapping him on the back and, you know, doing whatever, you know what they're like. And Brock Lesnar's just laughing at John Moxley and El Desperado and John Moxley climbs up on the turnbuckle and he's like get back here come on come on and um, of course Brock Lesnar doesn't listen to him and just retreats through the crowd so it looks like Brock has been listening to John Moxley's threats and I'm sure this is far from over and I'm pretty sure you guys can guess where this is heading <laughs> um, but El Desperado you know he he has his rivals but respect where respect is due helping out John Moxley and they celebrate together post match so a nice little moment to end what was probably a really fun match after this though we head to a former combat club member Brian Danielson who is our current world light heavyweight champion and he is looking to defend that title in a three-way against New Japan Pro Wrestling's Kushida 
and AEW's Nick Jackson. Who's your money on, guys? Let me know. Let's find out. An 81. Okay, again, Kushida dragging it down. Uh, but in about here, that had great wrestling and good heat. Brian Danielson retains. He pins Kushida with the running knee. Nick Jackson was on the outside and just, just missed the the timing on breaking up the pin, meaning that Brian Danielson has made defense number three of his AEW World Light Heavyweight Championship. And Nick Jackson, unfortunately, does not manage to get the win in his first title match. Kushida was the weak link. Yeah, I figured he would be. Um, but he had the most popularity of all the juniors in Japan. I mean, obviously, like Hiromu Takahashi would make sense. But his popularity was like 20 so that really wouldn't have helped because the way that our product works is it's like a 60 40 split on pop and skill and the skill between kushida and takahashi wasn't that different to be honest whereas kushida had like 50 pop so hey ho uh we gained heat though still with this uh segment so i'll take that and nick jackson benefits from a hot new move brian danielson celebrates with his wife they make their way up the ramp kushida bows to the audience you know showing a sign of respect he pisses off and Nick Jackson is just, you know, a little bit pissed off with himself. You know, he's just sat he's sat in the ring, kind of hasn't left yet. Um, just, you know, sitting his own sadness when there's like this commotion and stir from the crowd. Like right in the, the far back corner, there's just a, a noise and a, a, like a, people start cheering and like losing their minds slightly. And obviously Nick Jackson picks up on this. The lights pick up on this. The lights come up where the commotion is and standing at the top of the steps is Matt fucking Jackson. Matt Jackson has returned and is standing in the crowd clapping and laughing at Nick Jackson. And he's just pointing at his brother and just says, oh, you better be ready. You better be ready. And Nick Jackson has clocked seeing that he's lost his mind. He didn't think that Matt Jackson was going to return anytime soon. And he's like, what is this? What, what's going on? What's going on? And Matt Jackson's just high-fiving people in the crowd. You know, he's taking pictures with people. And he's like, you just wait. I'll see you next week. And Jackson just pisses. Well, Matt Jackson, sorry, I've got to be clear now. Matt Jackson just, you know, pisses off um, out back. And Nick Jackson is like, what the hell has just happened? You know, he's just lost that match. And now his brother is back, who I'm sure wants a little bit of revenge. So, yeah. Nick Jackson came out looking excellent. Of course he did. Matt Jackson, you know, you've got some climbing to do if you want to compete with Nick. But we will hear from, there's an announcement straight away. We will hear from and see Matt Jackson next week. So, oh, very excited. Uh, the best buck, Nick Jackson, or self-proclaimed best buck. That's up for question now, isn't it? <laughs> uh, following on from this, though, we've got the tag team exhibition match. It's the best broskies taking on Hiroki Goto and Katsuyori Shibata. Let's dive straight into this one. Uh, in a decent match, 82, I'll take that. Katsuyori Shibata and Hiroki Goto get the win. Um, they don't win in the cleanest of ways, though, because MJF intentionally got himself counted out. Uh, and the reason for this is because he was just fed up of being kicked in the chest. Uh, <laughs> he had the protective gear on for the first, you know, 10 minutes or so. And to be fair, MGF and Matt Cardona were probably performing better than Goto and Shibata during this. But um, it got to about, you know, 12, 13 minutes in where the protective gear was ripped off. Uh, Matt Cardona was floored on the outside. And it was just MJF just getting kick after kick after kick after palm strike after palm strike after palm strike and you could verbally hear you know how mjf is he's very vocal in his matches and he was just like no i'm done and he just rolled out the ring and left forcing a count out and shibata and goto winning but obviously post-match you know that's not enough you can't be having that uh, goto and shibata managed to pull them back into the ring and hit their joint finisher on the best bros he's getting kind of a, a visual win we could say um with uh that and the crowd celebrate with shibata and goto as they you know pay their respects to the crowd and leave leaving um mjf kind of you know unconscious in the middle of the ring with steph delanda trying to like slap him back to consciousness 
Uh, so yeah, just a fun little match here. MJF with a 90, Matt Cardona 86. Makes sense. I knew that these guys wouldn't have high ratings, but hey ho, it's fine. Uh, yeah, Shibata's got gimmicks getting stale. Yeah, I looked at some of the gimmicks that these guys had because um, I was worried that this might be a thing. And um, it did say that Shibata's gimmick is getting old. And I went to change it and it was like, he was like, I'm using my creative control to block this. And I'm like, you don't have creative control. Like, you're... You're loaned, and then I, I'm assuming his um, New Japan contract has creative control. So, yeah. Oh, well. And uh, you would have thought, because it's technically a debut. Oh, no, it wasn't a debut, because debut was the other week. Yeah, you would have thought that there'd be like a gimmick change, but I'm just talking to myself now. Um, but yeah, this match is done. And next up, I believe it is the rematch of the year. I don't bloody know. Uh, Kazuchika Okada and CM Punk 2. Uh, can CM Punk get the win over Okada? Last year, he touted this as a best in the world versus best in the world, and Okada came out on top. Um, but CM Punk claims that he is still the best in the world, and this time he's got Bullet Club Gold. So let's see what happens in this epic match. A 94! Whoa! I didn't expect that. Wow! In a match that had... Superb wrestling, my favourite word, and great heat. Okada gets the win again. So it's 2-0 between Okada and Punk uh, in 24 minutes with the Rainmaker. Uh, Okada with an 83. Nice one. I mean, to be fair, he's got good pop in the US. And uh, CM Punk with a 91. Uh, Punk's got a hot new move. Love that. Okada uh, has a gimmick that's getting stale. Oh, what a surprise. Um, although the Rainmaker gimmick is... A lifetime gimmick isn't it it's not like he's going to change it up anytime soon but yeah 94 i was not expecting a 94 this is what i mean about the surprising numbers um obviously i don't think anything's going to top the 98 let's be honest um but yeah 94 awesome and post match okada celebrates you know he hits his poses on the turnbuckle uh, but that is short-lived because as cm punk said i am the best in the world and this time, I've got Bullet Club Gold. So out come Bullet Club Gold, who start beating up Okada. Um, you know, just like taking turns, taking shots. Obviously, Kenta's got a brief history with Okada as well. So, you know, they're taking turns, just you know, battering him. When Prince Devitt comes down and saves Okada from the attack, you know, knocking down Kenta, throwing Chris Bay out of the ring. And Punk, who's already pretty tired, doesn't really have much steam left in him to fight back. So they retreat slightly with Prince Devitt helping Okada to his feet, um, leaving a pretty epic stare down between Punk, Bay, and Kenta staring down or staring up um, because they are on the outsides to Okada and Prince Devitt. Devitt, who of course, you know, has this kind of little rivalry with Punk at the moment. Um, but yeah, they kind of end with a bit of a stare down. Devitt eventually, you know, in Bullet Club Gold piss off, Devitt eventually gives Okada his time in the ring to celebrate with the fans, which is, you know, a spectacle. It's not every day you get to have someone like Kazuchika Okada in the middle of your ring. So, yeah, a lovely 100-rated segment. Mwah. Chef's kisses. Love that. But there is just two matches remaining. We have got Kairi and Hikaru Shida in the title versus title match, and we've also got the final of the world title eliminator more on that when we come up to it but next up is that title versus title match uh kairi shida hikaru shida kairi who's your money on let's find out oh an 88 is that our highest rated women's match i think it might be wow so in about that had great wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd it is kairi who defeats Hikaru Shida with the insane elbow in 18 minutes. And Kairi has won the IWGP Women's Titan and, of course, retained her Stardom World Championship. Hikaru Shida being outperformed, which is something that doesn't happen often. Kairi really stepping up in this one with an 84. And Hikaru Shida with a 78 and got the crowd buzzing, which I'm so happy it did. Because uh, I feel like this, in real life, would be an awesome awesome match um and post match you know shida being shida pays her respects shakes Kyrie's hand and gives her the time to celebrate in the ring with both titles she is taking them both back to stardom but also in aew because Kyrie is uh, a hired worker for aew 
um, but mostly she'll be in stardom um, being Kyrie two belts. But, you know, awesome match, 88, love that. Love that so much. Um, but now it's just the main event that remains. Uh, Pack Will Ospreay. Will Ospreay defeating both CM Punk and Prince Devitt to win his world title eliminator bracket to get here. Pack also defeating Adam Cole and Roosh in his world title eliminator to get here. They both have had AEW um, world title matches in the past. Will Ospreay defeated... Uh, Will Ospreay won the Owen Hart tournament to earn himself an opportunity where I believe he failed against John Moxley Pack. I think he's had two world title matches. He had one at full gear against Hangman Adam Page, which he lost. But that was, I believe, our match of the year um, of 2023. And I believe, was he in a triple threat or a fatal four-way as well? Was he in the one with Eddie Kingston and Jay White? I can't remember. He might not have been. But either way, 2023 was a weird year for Pac because even though he was never at the top, he did end up becoming TEW's Wrestler of the Year. And let's be honest, every match he's been in, it's been a five-star affair. The same with Will Ospreay. Um, it was kind of rocky getting him into AEW to begin with due, due to his loyalty to New Japan. But I think we won him over and he is now a full-time uh, AEW star. So yeah. Either of these men are more than deserving for a world title opportunity. So let's just quit talking. Let's stop staring at these lovely Japanese women. And instead, let's find out who will go on to face Hook before AEW All Out. A 94 as well. I will take that. In about that had superb wrestling and great heat. Pack gets the win. Pack defeats Will Ospreay in 33 minutes. With the Black Arrow, my goodness, a 33-minute match between Pac and Will Ospreay. I would pay very good money to see that in real life. Pac with a 91, Ospreay with a 91. I mean, it's too tough to call. I mean, like, literally, they're both performing at the same level. So, clearly, this was a close one with many near falls um, and zero interference from anyone. Because, of course, Pac doesn't have anyone to help him out anymore. He kind of sacked them all off after beating them up. Will Ospreay, you know, there was the the slight tease of maybe the Roberts family, but it seems like Ospreay is distancing himself from those rumours. And yeah, an awesome, awesome main event. Well done, Pac, I guess. Uh, which means that Pac and Hook will face off before AEW All Out. And post-match, Hook comes down to congratulate, you could say, his next opponent. Um, and they face off and stare each other down, but Pac grabs the microphone and just turns and completely dismisses the fact that Hook is in front of him and calls out Kenny Omega. And he's like, Kenny! Kenny! I'll see you at All Out. And then he throws the mic down, turns to look at Hook, laughs, and leaves the ring. So Pac is incredibly confident that he can, one, overcome Hook, and that he will be the champion heading into All Out. Oh, exciting. Uh, but that, with that 100 rated segment as well, hold on a second, a 100 rated segment between Pack and Hook, um, of course Kenny off screen as well, that is how we end the show with a 100 in front of nearly, I'm going to say nearly 50,000, it's not, we're like nearly 5,000 shy, but nearly 50,000 people at the Yankee Stadium. Let's finish this and see how Forbidden Door went down. A 95. Can't complain, won't complain, because that was awesome. Some matches were slightly lower than I'd hoped. Like, for example, uh, Brian Daniels and Nick Jackson, Kushida. I would have thought that even though Kushida was a bit pooey, that Nick and Brian could have elevated that slightly. But hey-ho, we got an incredible women's title match. Um, and then we got three matches, 94 and above, with one of them being so close to a 100. But just to quickly recap, Kenny Omega is going to All Out, not All In. Ignore me. Um, John Moxley gets the win over El Desperado, but Brock Lesnar is back. And Brock Lesnar's been listening. So it seems like the rivalry, the feud, the, the beef between them is going to continue. Nick Jackson fell short at his first title match. And then even more so, uh, the return of his brother must really have thrown him off. 
So Matt Jackson is back and we will hear from him next week. Uh, Shibata and Goto got the win over Best Broski. There's not really much to say about that. Okada makes it 2-0 and against Punk, which, you know, cheesed him off from Bullet Club. But Prince Devitt came out to save. I mean, Okada's not here week in, week out, so Devitt has now made an enemy, you would assume, out of Bullet Club gold. Uh, Kyrie with a historic match against uh, Karashida. And then good old Pack, the bastard Pack, is heading to a dynamite or collision. Probably collision because that's where Pack is situated. Um, into a title match with Hook. So the winner of that match will head to AEW All Out to face Kenny Omega. Let's make a speech. I mean, I don't know who to give it to. There's so many people. Um, I think Kyrie. Out, first of all, outperforming Hikaru Shida is great. So let's uh, tell them that they're awesome. I really want to give Keith Lee and Kenny the props because, you know, match of the night. But, you know, Matt Jackson returned. I want to give him a hug. Um, oh, actually, you know what? We need to... Is there a, like I told them that they're amazing? Repeatedly insulted. Uh, praise for a great performance. And Keith Lee, praise for a great performance. Wait, let's swap these over just so that we can end it on Kenny Omega's lovely little face. So pleased, pleased, pleased. And there we go. That is AEW New Japan Forbidden Door 2024 complete. We now have a new number one contender for our World Heavyweight Championship. We have a confirmed main eventer for our final pay-per-view. And a lot of stuff happened tonight, which I'm sure is going to grow into something bigger over the coming weeks as we make the final stride for AEW All Out. We've got what? a month of booking to go so i'd say yeah because this is going to bring us in on oh, this brings us to week two august so we've got five weeks of booking before AEW all out is here and the end of our aew series as always thank you very much for watching guys please like comment subscribe share and i will see you all in the next one